Good evening, everybody. It's uh, February 13th, Wednesday evening. I'm back in my hotel room after a long day of coaching and training and doing some flying. I'm in Michigan from Kansas. And uh, I was talking to a client and a few other coaching clients about um, their sales efforts. And some of the things that struck me was how people sometimes fail to use a lever or they fail to use they fail to use what I call Hollywooding a gift to a client. So if you do something extra special for somebody, you do have a lever. You have something that you can use in the event of a challenge with the same customer or client. Uh, let's suppose that you provide uh, an emergency service and provide them with a, a number of free goods to get them over a problem and you're not the major supplier. So, and, and then they promise you that you'll get a shot at the rest of the business. What you want to do is use that in a month or two months within a reasonable amount of time. I'd say within a month, say, you know, you, we, uh, how'd you feel about that favor we did and uh, how did that help you? So you give them time to answer, you pause and then say, well, you know, you mentioned that we would have an opportunity for to talk about the rest of the business. Can we get something on the calendar to do that? And then you might want to bring your boss along or some other uh, officer of the company because it's important to bring different layers in. Uh, people need to meet. Make, uh, the word is make more touches today with management. It's important for customers to do that. Most salespeople are resistant to it because they, they it's my customer. I want to keep management out of it. And it's actually a Harvard study that they did with uh, Procter & Gamble and Kimberly Clark and some really big blue chip companies. And they found that if you're selling them seven or eight different lines, you're, you're deep enough in the customer uh, you also need seven or eight touches from different people in your company. But let's suppose now going back to that lever that you've given them a bunch of free goods, helped them out with an emergency, uh, you've saved the buyer's day or the materials manager or the infection control nurse. It doesn't matter what you're selling, right? You've done them a big favor and they've promised you a shot at the business and then you don't get it. Worse, if you don't ask for it, they, if they promise that they would give you that shot at the business, then it's a great segue by asking, hey, how'd things go? We got you over a rough spot. Tell me a little about it. What did those around you say? What did other people say in the department, et cetera, right? You know how to ask some of those questions. You start with the end in mind and you develop some questions working backwards. And you're not tricking anybody. They promised to give you a shot at the business. And so your goal is to start with how they felt about it for a reason, because they're gonna hear themselves say, you know, I like, to, I like to help people hear them say with their own words that they need you or not. And so as they're describing how you save them with this big favor, it's then great to say, well, and we talked about in my recollection, uh, being able to have an opportunity to talk about the rest of the business. That's the time to go for it. And you bring it up within a few weeks, within a month. When you do the favor, say, and they say, yeah, you know what? You can have an opportunity to talk about the rest of the business. Well, give me a time frame. What are we talking about? When would you like to, me to get back to you so that you control it? You put some boundaries around it. And then, and then if they haven't done that for you, in three, four, five months, six months, you want to say, I've been remiss. I haven't really put any pressure on you. We haven't talked about the rest of the business. It's my responsibility. And I have a boss. And people are starting to ask questions about all the equipment I gave you, all the supplies I, I, I helped you with for free. And I did explain that it was going to get us future business. And so um, I just wondered where we are, where do we stand on that? And I'd like to bring my boss in so that we could have that conversation. Right, can you imagine if somebody asked you for, I don't know, $100,000 of free merchandise, $20,000 worth of free merchandise, and 
they said that you're going to get the rest of the business and it was a lot of business and you sold that to your boss. Can you imagine the boss explaining what happened to his boss or her boss? Hey, what's going on with that account? So <clears throat> rather than have that domino effect of everybody being upset and getting in trouble, you be the one to bring it up. It's a, it's a huge lever and I call it Hollywooding, right? So that not in a bad way, it's Hollywooding that moment, that special moment, reminding them that you help them get over the hurdle. When their existing supplier couldn't, for whatever reason, there was a challenge and you were the hero. Imagine if you said, when they asked for that free merchandise, wow, I'm not sure I could say yes to that. And by the way, that's a strategy too. You could say, I'm not sure I could say yes to that. Let me check with my boss and I'll call you back. And then you check with the boss and you call him back and say, my boss says yes and wants to meet with you first. Can we set up something for Monday? So you slow it down. You're not saying no, you're saying I wouldn't be able to say yes to it. I need to check with my boss. Then you call him back and say, yes, we can do it. And what we can say yes to is my boss wants to meet first and then we can provide what you need. We're glad to help you. So if they say, well, we need it right away. We'd like an answer today. Great. Let's get on a conference call right now so that you get people that can help you make that commitment. Some salespeople feel uh, they feel confronted they feel challenged by by uh, asking customers for for the other end of the commitment because they feel like the customer will get upset and they'll blow the whole deal well there's a reasonable and fair expectation for when you give the favor when you give the supplies when you give the equipment there's a reasonable expectation and if you don't ask it, they're not going to bring it up. Typically not going to because of change, change itself. Making a massive change is much more difficult than making a small change. If you save them from something, now guess what? They don't have to make the change. You save them from something. So it's not a priority unless you make it one. And it's fair. It's fair. And the way you frame it is important. If you need help with that, Call me, I'm glad to help. Reach out to me on my website. My email is steve at stevelentini.com, L-E-N-T-I-N-I.com. Great selling. You know I like to help people win. In fact, I love it. It's my, it's my passion. Good night.